in this video, I want to motivate the <clears throat> Lagrangian formalism and uh, the Euler-Lagrange equations that we've seen, that if we can uh, write them down, we can solve our equation of motion for our system. So, We've seen that the Lagrangian is this equation of T minus V, kinetic energy minus potential energy. And if we write this as a function, this is a function of position and velocity. For example, if we had a mass and a spring, this is one half kx dot squared minus, or sorry, one half mx dot squared minus one half kx squared. So in this example and for all examples um, that we'll be looking at, the Lagrangian only depends on position and velocity. Okay, so now I want to motivate where this is coming from. So to do that, we're going to talk about a principle called action. And action is kind of um, hard to picture. So we're going to be talking about it in a fairly general way. But one way that you can think about it Let's say I have, this is a graph of position and time. And you start here. Let's say this is start. And you want to end here. Now, there's any number of paths that you could take. You could take this blue path. You could take this red path. Or you could take this black path. And the path that the particle or object will take in the end is the path which minimize, not minimizes, it can minimize the action or maximize the action. But what it's really doing is it's moving along a path that has no change in the action. So your action is constant across the path that the object will take. And so what is this concept of action that we're talking about that uh, as long as it is not changing will determine the path of an object. And so this ties back into the Lagrangian. So the action, and I guess in this class we'll call action capital S, the action is defined as the time integral of the Lagrangian. <clears throat> 
So if you take your Lagrangian and integrate it with respect to time, you'll get the action. So when I said that this has to be true for whatever path our object will take, let's see what that means uh, with respect to the Lagrangian. So remember the Lagrangian is some function that depends on position and time. So if we So we want to vary our action. And so that means that we will have to vary our Lagrangian. And so what does varying our Lagrangian look like? So from one of the principles of calculus, varying a function, you take the partial derivative of the function with respect to the variables that it depends on, and then you vary over those variables. So because this function the Lagrangian depends on position and velocity. We take the partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to those things, and then we vary over position and velocity. And so this gets plugged back into here, and now varying our action means that the This term inside of the integral goes to the following. Okay, great. So now what? And so the the main thing to be keeping in mind is that at the end, because the we want a constant action we're going to set this whole thing equal to zero. Okay, so we've got this integral. And I forgot to write dt here. And because we're integrating over time, we can just stick some uh, limits on our integral. So we have this integral now. And so something that we can notice is that this variation of the velocity is the time derivative of the variation of the position. So we can plug that into our integral. Okay, so that made it look more complicated, but you might see that the second term now looks like a product rule uh, from uh, taking a derivative. So to show that, what if we were to take the time derivative 
of the partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to velocity times the variation in position. So if we did this derivative, these two things are multiplied together. So we'd have to use the product rule and we would get the time derivative of the first term times the second term plus the time derivative of the first term times the second or time derivative of the second term times the first term. And so if you look back here, now this term in our integral looks like the second term here. So if we solve this equation for this term, we get that the partial of the derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to velocity times the time derivative of the variation in position equals the total time derivative of the partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to velocity times the variation in position minus the time derivative of the velocity or time derivative of the partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to velocity times the variation in x in position. Okay, so this is maybe getting complicated, but it will simplify itself in a second. So we can take this new term that we found here and plug this into our integral. And so now our integral oops, will look like t1 to t2. So the first term stays the same, partial of the Lagrangian with respect to x, variation with respect to x. And now we add this other term that we just found. And now this whole thing is a, an integral over time. Okay, now we'll notice that we have two, um, two terms that have a variation with respect to x. And so we can group those two together. So let's do that on the next. So T1 to T2. So if we group all the things with the partial with respect to X, we would get. So let's group, let's group these two. Maybe I'll make a circle in red. So these two things in red We're going to group together. So the, the only term that doesn't have a direct uh, variation with respect to x by itself is the middle term. And it's the variation with respect to x isn't by itself because it has to be, uh, the time derivative has to be taken of that term. So this d by dt term times the 
partial of the Lagrangian with respect to velocity. Okay. Then we have this other term, these other two terms, partial of the Lagrangian with respect to x, variation in x minus the time derivative of the partial of velocity, or Lagrangian with respect to velocity, variation in x. And that whole thing is integrated with respect to time. So we pull that partial x out of those last two terms. And we get this. And now we have two terms that are in our integral and they're added together. So property of integral says that we can just treat that as two separate integrals. And in this first term, you'll notice that we have a total derivative with respect to time. And then we're integrating with respect to time. So that integral is just going to go away. And then our last term, we have, we're integrating with respect to time. And we have this Lagrange partial derivative of Lagrangian with respect to x minus the time derivative of the partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to velocity. And now you should notice that this looks like our Euler Lagrange equation. And this is exactly where that's coming from. But there's a lot of other stuff going on in this equation. So how do we separate just the Euler-Lagrange equation that we want? We look at the first term, this time derivative and the integral over time just leave us with the stuff inside the integral. And then we're going from these two bounds on our integral. Now you'll remember that this whole time we've been saving the fact that our action wasn't changing with time or that our action was supposed to be constant. And so what that means is that if we look at our, our paths that we were taking, we started here and ended here. There was a path that made our action equal to zero. And that means that our positions at these times are irrelevant. So basically our positions at T1 and T2 have to be have to satisfy this action equation. And in order to si satisfy that the action is zero, then plugging them into this equation means that everything has to cancel out to be zero. And then what we're left with 
is the second part of the integral dt variation in x um, partial Lagrangian with respect to x minus time derivative of the partial Lagrangian with respect to velocity. And now we need this thing to be zero to satisfy that our action is zero. And so that means that if this thing is equal to zero, we will satisfy that condition. And so that leaves us with time derivative of the partial Lagrangian with respect to time uh, velocity is to equal the partial derivative of Lagrangian with respect to position. And so that's exactly the Euler-Lagrange equation. And so it's this principle of the action being constant for the path that a particle will take that leads us to uh, being able to write down our Euler-Lagrange equations and use those equations to determine the equations of motion for our particle. This has been a Dr. Strassbau lecture. Peep the credentials. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications.